Don't go taking any souvenirs, Quinlan. Same M.O. as the others? You got it. Look around, you asshole. If anything, this is more gruesome than the other two. Hell of a lot more splatter. Who's the victim? Name's Stein. Renee Stein. Age 43. Book editor over at Knopf. Any connection to the other two? Well, let's see. Estevez was a programmer. Mendler, a dry cleaner. It'll take me 48 hours to run it down, but there's no connection here. You have any clues? No sign of forced entry. Nothing's disturbed. Two sets of prints. Hers and her mother's. The only thing not where it should be is this woman's insides. But well, what about witnesses? I mean, this guy must have been a bloody mess, even if it's 3 o'clock in the morning at Greenwich Village. Somebody must have seen him. As far as I know, he left us with one witness, and she's feeling a little fragmented at the moment. This guy is unfucking believable I haven't even watched wrestling this week, so I have no jokes to talk about. All right. I, I, do have, I do have one story that's sort of calf-related, if that's any use. I'm sure we'll get into that <laughs> later on. I actually watched this movie in the company of our cat. And, uh, well, well, what did she make of it? She was not happy with the ending, <laughs> mainly because she fucking nearly pissed herself and ran out of the room. <laughs> well, but, the old girl would be the kind of character that would scare a cat. I was it was more the sounds of another cat in the room. All right. But, um, <laughs> yeah, she's she's a territorial little thing. Our cat. It's a uh, you know wakes up every morning just like rubs her face on everything just in case anyone forgot during the night that everything is hers. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's just. Cats are fucking morons. I don't know why people people always go like, "Oh, cats are they're so intelligent and they're so they're not. They're, they're not idiots. And they just look good." Yeah, they're stupid and they're assholes. Yeah, like the equivalent. The cats are jocks. Mm. You know, like in those movies, the the teen movies, yeah. where they're like, "Oh, there's that guy's so cool because <laughs> he's got abs." No, no, he, like, he's an asshole. Yeah, like if he didn't have to get in the shower twice a day because of football practice, he'd be covering his own fucking feces. Like, yeah, you know, it's just <laughs> that, that's what a cat is like. Yeah. If a, if cats weren't narcissists, like nobody would like them. Yeah, you know? well, one of my favorite things uh, about ads in general is you know how whenever they're doing an ad, an ad for cat food, they always have like an upper crusty English kind of voice. Yeah, it's yeah, like you know. Uh, it's a it's a taste of distinction for your distinction friends like uh, no that is a little fucking ball of, stupid ball of fur that would starve to death if you didn't feed it mashed up fish guts yeah that's what it is oh, that's the thing like PETA the yeah. people for the ethical treatment of animals mm. right they often claim um, they're always like oh we need to liberate all animals yeah so no no pet has an owner mm house cats would go extinct yeah right because they yes they catch their own food mm. but they're also lazy fuckers yeah so like within I predict within a year they'd go extinct also I think they, they can't exist without being able to sleep in piles of uh, freshly washed clothes I think so yeah did you know the the neighbourhood cats have turned the little walkway between the back garden and the front yeah. garden into a dogging spot oh really <laughs> Yeah, I I only I only learnt this when I got woken up by it last night. Jesus. Yeah, and uh, then the cat walked in to check out what was going on. Yeah. And she, you know, she couldn't see it. I couldn't see it either. But they were either fighting or riding. I'm not entirely sure. There isn't really much of a difference. Yeah. The cats. There was lots of loud screeching involved, anyway. Oh, so. Just imagine this movie had a sex scene. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, obviously, this is, it's technically a podcast about cats, but really yeah. it's not. We're, we're, you know, we're, this is a cat, this is a canon films, yeah. not cats. That's what we're talking about. And uh, of course, the reason we're talking about cats is because we're talking about uh, 1988's Puss in Boots. <laughs> Obviously, I'm Johnny Capcom, and you are Sean Sheridan. And, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, not a lot of time has passed for our listeners. You know that it's just a regular two weeks. Yeah. Uh, for us, many time. Yeah. Uh, many Much time. time. Many time has passed, mainly because 
uh, we panic recorded like three episodes a few weeks back and uh, you know we're not we're not trying to keep you in the dark on these things but yeah. uh, it's it is, behind the scenes stuff here right now yeah yeah the KFA brother yeah but uh, yeah this is um, this is our first one in a while uh, we I remember a few weeks back when you showed me the trailer for the movie that we're going to discuss today and I lost <laughs> my fucking mind because uh, Puss in Boots just like it's it is crazy yeah it's not as crazy as the trailer making, the yeah. Way, but it is mental. Mm. And uh, anyway, this is uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to, about this is because is the reason you brought it up. This is like a Christopher Walken starring. Film, yeah, and um, I I love Walken. Yeah. Now th- this is the first time, and with due respect to to Chuck Norris, this is the first film we've done in this so far that has had like a legitimate star you know like a real movie star the weird thing about walking is though and George mm. Kennedy no uh, I, I don't know I, <laughs> I don't know if I count him really you know what he, Frank... prob- he probably was a star yeah. then he did Bolero True. and he was out of trouble <laughs> you know? yeah it's like you're going to have to do police squad to get back in here motherfucker the weird thing about what you say is star hmm. I only walk in, like, I was the more I thought about walking is he a leading man uh, that see that's the thing about him it's very hard to quantify what he is because I think the majority I, of people when they really think about it they're probably his best roles yeah. are probably him in supporting roles true uh, Deer Hunter fucking uh, you well, know uh, True Romance you know it's oh, another like, supporting yeah True Romance yeah. and Pulp Fiction are two of his best roles and yeah. he's in it for one scene true you know very true but uh yeah, yeah like uh, look, I don't. Wanna, we're big Christopher Walken mm. fans. I take. I, th- I think. I think part of the reason I love him is because he does stuff like this. Yeah. You know, because every now and again, some you know, a movie, a script will just will just make its way to him that's just completely mental, and he'll and he'll just go, yeah, that's the one for me. Well, apparently he's like William Shatner and goes like that. He just doesn't bother turning down work. <laughs> yeah. Like he's like. Uh, yeah sure I'll do it I've got two weeks you <laughs> yeah. know and uh, it's the weirdest thing his star has never fallen because so many actors who do stuff like that like when Robert Forster who was mm. in Jackie Brown like who was like this guy back in the 60s and he just he had all he was nominated for an Oscar mm. for one of his movies and then he just was like oh yeah I'll do anything yeah. you know and his star fell and other people like, like Nicolas Cage just, and I love Nick Cage like but his star has fallen yeah. somewhat because of his willingness to do the season of the witches and <laughs> yeah. movies like that. Whereas Walken just went, I'll do everything. And the world went, yeah, you fucking right on, Chris. Well, I, I think the, th- the thing with Chris, with Chris Walken is he, you know, he had built up such goodwill at, yeah. at a certain point that you can do whatever the hell you like. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same with Shatner. I mean, Shatner will always work until he decides he doesn't want to anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, and people will always watch it because it's Shatner. And it's the same with Walken because he, you know, he's been in some tremendous, tremendous films back in the seventies and eighties, even up to the like early to mid nineties. Yeah. You know. Hey uh, man. You know. Uh, there's other great movies. You know, coffee and cigarettes. Okay, fair point. Yeah. No, no, there's great movies he's done in the last few years. Like yeah. you know, I, I really enjoy Walken in uh, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, or, as our American listeners would probably know it, the rundown. Yeah, Hell Dorado. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's fucking amazing in that movie. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, just his reaction to the Rock doing his thing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like that's a that's a good movie. Like yeah. people forget about Welcome to the Jungle, but look, it's got some crazy action in it. Mm. Christopher Walken is fucking dining on the scenery. Yeah, and Rosario Dawson's in it. Yeah. You know, and she has a wet T-shirt scene in it, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with anything that woman does. If yeah, you ask me, but uh, true. Oh, is it the yeah? Like he's done a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, like what was that one in the eighties where he was like a psycho or like a psychic? Oh, he's, he's still got his view to a kill here. Uh, I I for, it's, it wasn't the prophecy, was it? I think it might be the prophecy. Yeah, where he was where he was sort. Of, you know where he was a demon, but he decided I'll do this with a sort of disco swagger. Yeah, it's like yeah. why the f- you're Chris, do whatever the fuck you want. Like the the <laughs> thing is, like it's so weird growing up. Like my mom loved him. 
mm. and everybody seemed to love him. Yeah. He seems to be one of these guys that everybody just kind of gravitates towards. Mm. And I think the reason being is that he's almost... And I think he's a great actor, but he can rely on playing just himself yeah. and get away with it. <laughs> he's like an old movie star, like, um, like John Wayne or... Yeah. You know, Cary Grant or people Chuck like that. Norris. Yeah, Chuck who, Norris. You know, they're, who basically were just like, yeah, like Cary Grant. Mm. Like, did he? Act, he played himself. Yeah, a, essentially in every <laughs> film he ever did. A good-looking mm. dude who gets away with shit because he knows he's yeah. good-looking and he's weird charm. Yeah. that's all the Cary Grant characters. Jim, Jimmy Stewart was the same. Mae oh, West yeah. was the same. Well, no, Jimmy Stewart had range because Jimmy Stewart eventually started playing weirdos and psychos. And oh, like, true, yeah, but for like a good bulk of his career, he was the he was the nice he was the nice, well-spoken. You know, down to earth, kind of. You know, Paul Heyman apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I. Okay, I never claim to be a good impressionist. All right. But uh, <laughs> eventually, he became nuts. I yeah, I remember seeing like what was the rope? Yeah, it was a fantastic uh, Jimmy Stewart fucking scumbag performance. Well, you know that that was Hitchcock, and Hitchcock had had a habit of casting people against type just for the fuck of it. Oh yeah, he also you had a ca- habit of terrorizing women, from what I'm told. Yeah, like, didn't like women. Uh, well, that, this is all <laughs> speculative now, but uh, you know, based on based on the evidence we've heard, is yeah. all I'm saying. Right. Well. Obviously, we're talking about walking. Yeah. Jesus, that's a good rhyme. (laughs) But um, we're talking about walking, and uh, we're talking about, in particular, Christopher Walken's favorite film he's ever been in. Yeah, according to uh, an interview I read in Empire Magazine a few years ago, Mm -hmm. this was the best time, according to himself, the best time he had making a film. And I'm very... And as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, okay, I'm I'm interested. Tell me more. And then I found out it was a canon film. It's like, I finally have an excuse to watch this thing now. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> it's a children's musical. You're not going to go to your way. If you, yeah. look, you're a grown-ass man. Exactly. Right? If someone says to you, it's Friday night, you want to watch a movie, you don't go, I want to watch 1998, 1988's canon children's musical, Puss in Boots. Yeah. You're going to say, well, I'm in the mood to watch a Christopher Walken movie. Yeah. I want to watch fucking... You know, you know uh, Sleepy Hollow, even or oh fuck yeah, yeah, uh, you know, even the Country Bears. If I if I'm that drunk, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, no, get your shit in, brother. Yeah, get your shit in. No, I, I'd be it'd be something like the Prophecy or a fucking Deer Hunter or something like that. Yeah, you're not gonna watch this. Yeah, King in New York would be the would be the one I go for. Very good movie. Mm. Yeah, I, I will personally Batman Returns. That's uh, yeah, that's my favorite Christopher Walken <laughs> performance. You know, my boy Chip. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the, Bros, what are yeah. you doing dressed as Batman? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kyle had an unfortunate accident. <laughs> but, um, <Yep. laughs> We're going to be doing this the whole fucking time. I just want you to know. You can't, you can't do a Christopher Walken film and not do that. Oh, it's I just impossible. Him. I love Chris you know, Walken. It's like going uh, to Jerusalem and not visiting the Sexeteria. It's just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, this movie is the, is a classic uh, fairy tale brought to life. Yeah. I, I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't even bother researching Puss in Boots, the, yeah. the, the, I was going to say the comic. <laughs> but, but, uh, the, the, it says a lot about your movie watching habits that uh, that's what yeah. you go for out of reflex. The, the fairy tale. I didn't bother reading the fairy tale. Well, the, uh, this is this is a pretty accurate adaptation of the fairy tale. Except he's a man, not a cat. Yeah. But, you know, consider, considering the limitations of the time, yeah, they, could, they couldn't really do that. So, yeah. Apart from you know it being Christopher Walken, yeah, you know, An sto- man. you know the the story beats is pretty much the same as the original Charles Perrault tale. Okay, okay, mm. but uh, I didn't really read it. I, I read it as a kid. Obviously, mm. everybody reads fairy tales when they're a child. I believe, yeah, unless like children today, just yeah. like their parents just put on a pornography slideshow for them <laughs> on their phones, but uh, they don't read. Yeah. You know? Here, you can have your dinner once you huff this lynx out of a bag. Yeah. <laughs> Kids today, like, I mean, they're watching fucking Bud Dwyer videos before they go to sleep. Like, yeah, you know? you know, everyone, you know, ten, every 12-year-old these days has a poster of Max Hardcore on his wall. Oh, you know? God. <laughs> 
to record a reaction video <laughs> to some scat pornography and then go Put to it sleep. up online. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a hundred and fifty thousand hits on YouTube yeah, right yeah. there. They're like, I'm really tired. It's time for me to go to bed. I'm gonna watch a video of a man beating a child to death with a hacksaw. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like to fall asleep to. Anyway, what were your uh, expectations and hopes for this movie going in? Um, my my hopes, <laughs> my expectations. I didn't know what to expect. Because I was just, I, I went in expecting a bit of Walken mentalness, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was just, I just wanted to see Christopher Walken. To be perfectly honest, that was that was my main, that was my main motivation for wanting to see this film. My hopes for this film were it was going to have like one or two nice tunes. Mm -hmm. It had, you know, and it would. See, I'm not a, a fan of musicals to begin with, uh -huh. so this was never going to change my life or anything. Yeah. But I was hoping, you know, it'll have like a tune that'll stay in my head for a day and I can, you know, and it won't be a total waste of time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm... you know, you selling me a musical is like, you know, se selling a dog to a man who fancies cats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I didn't know what to expect from this movie, truth be told. Yeah. Because like, I mean, it's a fucking musical. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, I was worried about recording this because I was like, how do you just think you're like, and then they sing. Yeah. It's not like Bolero, right? <laughs> yeah. Where you go, and then he slotted it into yeah. her and she looked like she'd been delivered a big shit sandwich. Yeah, and a pink sign came up. Yeah, and yeah. I it's fu it's easier to describe sex than it is song. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking, maybe I'll get yeah. lucky and like Jason Connery and the princess will just get it on for a few minutes. Yeah. But it never happened. Unfortunately. But, but um, yeah, so I didn't really know what to expect and uh, I think I will just save my... Uh, <laughs> my thoughts on on for the main discussion, which we'll get to right now, I suppose. Sure, yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's jaunt our way back into the past with uh, nineteen ninety eight. Fucking hell! I'd love to see the ninety eight version of this. You know, Guillermo del Toro direct. <laughs> yeah, fucking. <No. laughs> In Spanish. Yeah, and it's it. set in the backdrop no. of the fucking. Uh, the Cold War yeah, with you know. Banderas instead of instead of Walken you yeah know, which he was the that's the right Shrek, yeah. that's uh, right I keep forgetting that but uh, he, he that was a good pull though Banderas would be in it. yeah he would but anyway let's get into uh, the, the 1988 canon movie tale Puss in Boots <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived a poor peasant boy with nothing to his name but a clever little cat and a magical pair of boots. Academy Award winner Christopher Walken stars as the enchanted Puss in Boots. These boots will change our lives faster. We'll never want for anything again. When his master falls for a beautiful princess, Puss will do anything to bring the boy his true love. The gift of my most noble master, the illustrious Marquis of Carabas. Who, who, who is the Marquis of Carabas? Who is he? And why don't we know the name? When they find out who we are, they're going to throw us both in the dungeon. If it is not all exactly as I've heard, you will... <laughs> For the first time on screen, the magical, musical story of a shy boy. Dance. No. A bold princess. You've got to stick your neck out now and then. A terrible ogre. I can become whatever I like. And a very clever cat. <coughs> Christopher Walken and Jason Connery star in Puss in Boots. Uh, okay, uh, I, I I guess just let's get into this shit. If you if you got something to put, to, to yeah. jump with, with us yeah, there. we we start off with um, a dark and stormy night in fairy tale land. Yeah, it never they never specify what country this is, so I'm assuming it's just fairy tale land, middle Europe. Yeah, something like that. 
and um, we get we get a shot of um, you know everyone locking up their doors and hiding away, and this you know we he's introduced as the ogre, mm -hmm. and um, he's uh, he looks like a cross between Shrek and Pinhead, yeah, and apparently yeah. he has the powers of Manimal. You know, yeah, yeah. That he yeah. can just sort of morph as will into different animals as he feels. And um you know, it's just him wandering through the place and he just roars out, I can become whatever I like Yeah. To the point where I'm like, Okay, this guy clearly doesn't speak English. Yeah. It's not his first <laughs> language. You know? Yeah. You can you can become whatever you like except a fluent English speaker. That's what I'm saying here. That's a case of where they need to show you his powers. Mm. But instead of actually showing you them at work. Yeah. They just go, look, he can change you to a bear and a lion and shit. Yeah. Remember this. Yeah. Okay? And it's really shitty morphing effects as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, I'll be honest with you, the, the animals themselves, yeah. they look like abuse circus animals. <laughs> yeah. Like, later on, he turns into an elephant and it doesn't mm. have his tusks. Yeah. And it's it's one of those it's one of those blue screen jobs where it's like, yeah. it's clearly not in that, oh, in yeah, that it's, shot. Oh, yeah. It's stock footage of abuse it, animals. They probably got it from the NSPCA. Probably. <laughs> you know. You know, by rights, there should be like, like Sarah Brightman, you know, singing a song over yeah, footage yeah. of these animals. Arms of an angel. Exactly. I uh, fucking hate that song. <laughs> Every time I hear that song, I want to beat a fucking rare animal to death. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just fuck what, it. What, what were your thoughts on the ogre anyways, man? Oh, God. I didn't know. Like, he just... he. I was just like... He, he's just a fat dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he looked like Tor Johnson or... Uh, like... George the Animal Steel mm. you know who basically I mean there's a, I have to explain that to you fuck off right? <laughs> yeah but, um, but, but he, he did he did look a lot like Shrek you know I mean, oh he did it was yeah. the same it was the same colour palette the same basic clothing and everything yeah you know? yeah it was very strange in that like I, I, I didn't even consider that until you said it but yeah he does mm. um I, I think it's fair to say at this point the Shrek's probably a fucking rip off oh, of him you know well, you know, for legal purposes, we can't we can't no, say we, that outright, but we, you know, we can say that. Outright. Oh, okay, fair enough. Shrek yeah. was a fucking rip off of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I, it was a brief moment, and then I was like, "Has he got anything to do with anything?" Because straight away we yeah. were back to the mill. Yeah, and uh, basically, Jason Connery appears, mm. our our star. Yeah, um, the shit Robin Hood. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, that was the, I don't know if you remember Robin Hood from the BBC. Of course you do. Yeah, the uh, from the eighties one. The eighties one, yeah. Yeah, and there was two Robin Hoods. There was the original kind of gruff, uh, beardy Robin Hood. Yeah, and then he had a fallen out with someone probably, mm. and they got Jason Connery in to be Robin Hood. Yeah, and then they swiftly cancelled Robin Hood. <laughs> yeah. Amazingly enough, the man is a very pretty man. But if you if you've gotten gruff already, yeah. and you're you know it's a downgrade to just pretty. You I know have what I mean? written here about Jason Connery. Mm. He is the least electrifying man <laughs> in the history of entertainment. <laughs> wow! Like he's so he's a charisma vacuum. Like so he, he's like the Steve Davis of acting. Yeah, he's like. For those of you who read the books, right, mm. he's kind of the way to describe Rhaegar Targaryen. <laughs> That's the best way, you know what I mean? He's a, like he's not a bad looking dude. Yeah, uh, he's uh, Aryan. Mm. Um, Aryan as all fuck. You know, kind of blonde, blue eyed dude. It doesn't look at all like his dad. Yeah, old Sean Connery. Close your cunt. Yeah, I, uh, actually, the Aryan thing. I I was I was gonna say. I mean. You know, this film was shot in Jerusalem, and uh, with the exception of Walken, Connery, and the princess, yeah. it is pretty much an entirely Israeli cast, yeah, yeah. which just makes Connery look even more yeah. fucking like the, the Nazi ideal of what a man should look like. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you can just see it. Was... You can just see a picture of him drawn yeah. with a proud chest as he surveys the <laughs> yeah. hinterlands. <laughs> you know, like, and underneath it, it's written, like, you mm. know, ah, clean air. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. You know, what? Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. You know, I'm just talking about, I, I didn't bring any, I, if I did bring any yeah. horrible Nazi <laughs> shit in there, I didn't mean to. 
It's just like I always, I always remember those like Nazi posters of Aryan men, mm. you know, going ah the, the the clean air of the Alps, you yeah. know, and it's there going we're not all, you know, it's the weird thing they had to kind of try and tell you they were nice. Some of yeah. the Nazis did. <laughs> they were kind of like going look at once we get done with all this death destruction and fucking. Once we get done with the human horror show, like yeah. it'll be nice. It'll be, well, everyone will have a farm, and ice cream will, you know, yeah, well. come at two cents a gallon, and fucking, you know, like yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, um, <laughs> that was a bit of a weird. Zone. Hey man, don't look at any anybody who listens to the other podcasts like, yeah. who knows that I will talk about the 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 third Reich. Yeah. The drop of a hat. Oh God! So uh, I I'll keep that in mind for later. Look, there's, it's just there. there. Anyway, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's uh, this Aryan-looking kid. Yeah. Uh, again, the least electrifying man. Oh yeah, uh, he's is like a charisma vacuum. He's he's, he's a heat sink. Yeah, he's a he's he's got the personality of a fridge. Yeah, let's be yeah. perfectly honest. I think if he was an X Man, right. Mm. His power would be he'd be immediately able to turn milk to room temperature. <laughs> That'd be if you're going, is that too cold or too yeah. hot? Room temperature. <laughs> and only milk. Yeah. You know, and at that only coconut milk. Yeah. You know, not even <laughs> not even proper tit milk. But um yeah. yeah um, it start it starts off his story starts off with his dad dying. And <laughs> the big boss man yeah. put his dad's coffin on the back of the car. <laughs> oh god, that'd be amazing. But um If I yeah. was a singer yeah. as stupid as you, I'd hope my dad would die yeah. too. <laughs> then I would get my cat and I would kill that thing. <laughs> I would serve it on a plate while I did a sing. <laughs> <laughs> on two the king. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> and um you know dad you know his father, you know, which was which was very nice of him. Yeah. You know, on his deathbed, gave us a bit of exposition. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, right, kids, I'm dying. Look, you, you, elder brother, you get the mill. Yeah. You know, you, you get the donkey. Yeah. And you, Blondie, you get the cat. <laughs> and I was like, I would feel so screwed over if I, if I was Corrin at that point, yeah. Jason Connery. It's like, all right, he's getting the business. He's getting a fucking beast of burden so he can go out and make his own fucking way in the world. Yeah. I'm getting a cash. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, that's a burden, you gobshite. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, he wanders the, what you call it, he wanders the, the, mm. the forest afterwards. Like, yeah. straight away, it just goes, right, on, on I go. Yeah. He walks about five minutes away from his house and goes, I've never been this far from home. Yeah, I was, I was just, what the hell? I was like, what did he do? Keep you locked in the fucking basement, friction yeah. style? Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, what, what the fuck? Like, and uh, he took, anyway, he wanders on down the road. Yeah. And then, like, he's feeding the cat. Mm. And then he goes, maybe, oh, look, I'm feeding you sausage. Yeah. Maybe I should turn you into a fur cap and yeah. some sausage cat. Yeah. And they're going, is it? Who is is this is Michael Myers? Like, yeah, this know? is this is gonna get weird. Yeah, it's like is oh god, like this, this is a children's thing, and he's talking about killing and skinning a cat. Yeah, it's like, that's fucked up. I just immediately didn't like him. Yeah, you know, and all of a sudden, Christopher Walken blinks into existence. Yeah, demands a pair of boots, and then blinks right back out again. It's uh, like the, the, well, there's two <laughs> things, right? One. Jason Connery's character yeah. doesn't question his sanity once. Yeah, like there's a uh, there's a man barefoot mm. in red robes. Yeah, right. Going, I need boots. Yeah, why don't you get me some, some boots? boots? And <laughs> in in this, I'm assuming medieval fairy tale land. Yeah, he's rock he's rocking a flat top and a Freddie Mer- Mercury tash. Yeah, yeah. No one else in the entire fucking kingdom looks like this guy. No, and he's you got know? an American accent. Yeah. And uh but he's just there going get me some and he doesn't he like he, he literally flashes in and out of existence. There's no way I've written here <laughs> yeah. is it's like a fucking prodigy music video from mm. the early 90s like if you put Charlie over this. Yeah. Like it ju- no don't change it. Just no. put Charlie over it. Like, oh, that's you know we're I mean? doing that. You know what I mean? We're doing that, and uh, that's what it would be like. It's like because it's, it, it's just it, they can't show the morphing effects from mm. like there was a lot of like 
I can't remember specifics now, but like where they show someone morphing it, like like in Willow, they yeah. show a guy morphing into a dog or whatever. Yeah, yeah. In this, they didn't have the money for that, so it'd just, it's be just flat, jump. you know, frame of the cat, frame of walking, yeah. flash, 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 flash. Yeah, and that's what it was, and it was just like <laughs> you could just imagine yeah. like uh, uh, just nuts music played over yeah. it, while Jason Connery just stares wide eyed at it. Like, yeah, you know? and. You know, they this goes on for a bit. Like they they sleep and they sleep overnight in a barn. Well, and uh, yeah, he he gets they sleep overnight. The cat does obviously, yeah. and eventually he just goes, "Get me some boots. I need boots so I can yeah. stay a human." If you can get me some boots, yeah. we will never need to work again. Yeah, he and goes. What? Yeah, and what the fuck? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> that was better explained in the fairy tale. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he gets him some boots anyway. And he turns into Christopher Walken. <laughs> yeah. And they they have a little bit of a sing song. Yeah. Uh, the the moral of the story so far: give your cats everything it want, everything it wants, and Christopher Walken will appear. That's the moral of the story so far, as far as I can tell. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, there there was the the song that comes up, um, the song that comes up. I'm a happy cat. Yeah. I really enjoyed, to be honest with you, because uh, Wal- Walken he was doing he was doing this shtick where he was getting used to walking on two feet. Yeah. So every now and again, he just have to you know sort of go into horse stance. It's like, oh, I nearly fell over there. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, I'll be honest I'm a with happy you, cat. Uh, Connery. The other thing is, Connery is not a singer. He's not a born singer. Well, but the thing is. Uh, I thought it was him singing. Turns out it was some other dude. Yeah, it was a, it was who, a guy called Nick Curtis, who's still kind of blue. Yeah, you know, maybe like because <laughs> Jason Connery doesn't look like he's enjoying himself during the dancing scenes. No, but uh, so maybe this guy had to tone down his uh, his performance to Nick Curtis yeah. on a microphone because uh, even with a fake voice, he I actually just had to pull a fucking cat hair. Oh my <laughs> god, because apparently my. Cat was sleeping in in your mouth, probably. <laughs> but um, the, um uh, yeah, uh, they have a bit of a sing song. I don't mm. really know how to describe this, so I didn't really write. But yeah, they're singing about how they're gonna get money. And yeah, shit. and he's he's you know, and how he's a happy cat. Yeah, and, like basically, right? Christopher Walken put his boots on and then said. Get bitches, get paid. Yeah, pretty much. And they rapped a bit. And yeah. And then, you know... Oh, if they were doing it today, yeah. it'd be like, you know, Usher or someone in the car and roll. Yeah, yeah. And Snoop Dogg is fucking puss. And, oh, Christ, I would watch that film. Yeah. Like, twice at night, once again in the morning. But, but uh, they, they go for another job. They're yeah. They're looking to find their fortune. And this is a very childish notion of the world. Yeah. Like, I remember when I was a kid thinking, like, well... If I knew if there was a local princess and she got in trouble, mm. sure I'd just have to find the sword and then I'd wander. Oh yeah. You know, I remember thinking that as a young man as well. I was thinking like I don't know, I think I'll be one of these guys who just wanders the roads fighting people <laughs> yeah. and helping people. Doesn't quite work like that. No, no, you wander the roads eventually you become a tramp. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's... And you're not much use to anyone at that point. No, no, you just get into the booze. <laughs> and uh you know, you don't wash, and eventually, you, and eventually, someone shanks you over a fucking ham sandwich. Yeah, you know, yeah it's yeah. a, it's a hard life. It's a hard life. But um, <laughs> yeah, they 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 go wandering, and they run into the ogre again. Yeah, and uh, I he the ogre, we learned at this point that the ogre's got a lot of money, mm. uh, horses, and yeah, he's uh, got a thousand Arabian horses from a thousand Arabian sultans. Yeah, I, I was there going, oh, is this a prequel to Bolero? <laughs> yeah. You know? But um, and Bo Derek offered it up to every single one of them. Yeah, yeah. Bo Derek <laughs> debased herself in front of every Arabian lord, and they sent this guy a yeah. fucking horse just to make sure she'd go away somehow. In fact, the the ogre is probably just the physical manifestation of the herpes she picked up along the way. Exactly. But <laughs> oh, yep. I will not argue with that. But uh, uh, you know, it's canon. It's yeah, canon. It is. It's in multiple ways. But um Yeah, like he 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 chases Chris walking off his land. Mm. He finds out he's all, owns all this land. But then I realised what he's like he's like Tim the Enchanter from mm. uh Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah. He just turns into shit because he can. 
Yeah, pretty much. You know, like uh, one of my favorite scenes in the Holy Grail is the bit where like Timmy and Chandler is just blowing shit up mm. just because he can. Yeah. For no good fucking reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, no good reason whatsoever. And that's what is going on here. Mm. He's there going like he's just a big fat fucker who shouts and intermittently turns into animals that have no purpose. Yeah. Like, like um you know, the uh, Walken gets away by turning back into his cat form and climbing a tree. Yeah. And you're you're just thinking, couldn't the ogre turn into an animal that's really good at climbing trees? Like a sloth. Yeah. Or, a you know, monkey. a koala or a monkey or whatever. And, you know, just beat the shit, you know, beat the shit out of Walken. Movie over. Yeah. You'd think. You'd, I think what it was, was he could only turn into animals that were somehow housed in either the Israeli state zoo <laughs> or the Israeli state circus. You know? Uh, I think you may be onto something there. You know? I think you may be onto something. I think you go back and mm. they're going, uh, yeah, we lost our bear. Yeah. Because Canon made a movie about the bear. <laughs> and uh, We need a bear. It's a movie. Yeah. But... <laughs> and... Uh, Either that, or was you know Menachem used his fucking shady, uh, his shady contacts to somehow get a Kazakh bear, <laughs> you know, just you know, brought in over. Well, uh, you know, the wall has fallen. The Russians are getting rid of everything. Everything must go, including yeah, yeah. the wildlife. So um, maybe they're just you know maybe there's yeah. a deleted scene in Charlie Wilson's War, <laughs> where you know they're like. You know, it's <laughs> where where a shady where a shady Israeli Hollywood producer is uh is figuring out the the rates of what the going rate is for a bear. Well, if you remember in Charlie Wilson's War, they were getting Israeli weapons to the Taliban. That's right, yeah. So maybe they were just like, and if you throw Menachem an old elephant, like, <laughs> <laughs> we're good to go. You know, and, yeah. Uh, that's. You know, it's an interesting web of conspiracy you've got there, man. Oh, yeah. and then, look, Charlie Wilson is a lizard. Yeah. But um, that's what I'm taking away from this. True, right? true. It's a lizard yeah. agenda, brother. Mm. But uh, <laughs> open your eyes, people. What's the problem, right? Yeah. All the lizards. <laughs> okay? Hashtag yes, all lizards. Vince McMahon is a lizard. <laughs> uh, who else is rich? Um, Bill uh, Gates, definitely a lizard. The that queen. Chav who won the, the, the lottery, yeah. lizard. Uh, fucking In fact, everyone who wins the lottery, that's yeah. what happens. You know? Jim Core. Yeah, Jim Core. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a disinfo agent. Lizard. <laughs> uh, fucking... <laughs> drinking blood being a lizard yeah right getting paid yeah making the towns fucking the rats, rats alright <laughs> being a lizard <laughs> but, um, so uh, so we move on um yeah I, I actually at this point I wrote like uh, Christopher Walken's dancing around a bit and yeah. he's having a good old time mm. and I'll say this Christopher Walken does look like he's having a fucking yeah. ball playing this character and, and he is he is magnetic when he's up there. Like you cannot not look at Walken when he's on the screen. Yeah. Whatever is going on, you're watching Walken. And it's one of the most least dynamic films I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely. They literally just put put a camera in a room and make him yeah. dance around. It, it. Yeah, the, 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 the wrestling match equivalent of when you had like Shawn Michaels and mm. you just get Great Cali to stand in front of him. Yeah, and then go put your fist out. Yeah. And Shawn and make five minutes out of just oh, walk absolutely. into his hand. <laughs> yeah, but um, With, yeah. I do remember the way there's a there's kind of a how do I put this mm. like he's talking about how much he loves Jason Connery's character yeah. and he's just singing about how when he used to watch yeah. him sleep yeah and all this kind of shit and I just wrote down I think Jason Connery uh, is pro I wonder did he lie there years ago looking at, back at the cat mm. thinking I wish my cat would turn into a big sexy boyfriend for me <laughs> <laughs> my, what, what I have written down is if I were Karn, I'd be dealing with the realization that Walken has watched me masturbate. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, like if he's there going, I, I, if only there have been lyrics like that. Yeah, because if you, you know, if you're a single man, you've got a cat. It's yeah. going to wander through in inner, inopportune moments. So, you know, I Wal watch you there yeah. in your bed <laughs> as you pulled your little dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, what what what's what's the standard protocol for that? I'm I'm not entirely sure. I mean, is it shame? Is it pride? Is it mortification? I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Well, it's that thing, you know. How do I put it? Animals, no. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to relay a not a masturbatory tale. Mm. All right, but another tale. I remember going down on a girl one time. Okay. And uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, I do remember going down on a girl one time and her cat was in the windowsill yeah and I'm eyes forward yeah all right concentrating on what you're doing yeah 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 and uh, obviously we're all grown ups here we can talk about sex yeah, right absolutely all right and, and I remember looking up and uh, her cat was in the windowsill and that cat was looking at me <laughs> and that cat knew what I was doing <laughs> all right I, I could just I was like just, Locked eyes, <laughs> and uh, I remember obviously, uh, you know, my eyes were the only thing probably visible at this point. Yeah, and that cat was just kind of looking at me, just go, I know what you're doing, mm. and it's fucking weird. <laughs> 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 it just had that look, you know, not yeah. that I'm look, not that I'm fucking calling, uh, yeah, calling as weird as any, in yeah, any rate, or, right? But from every the cat's man, point of view, every man's a fan, yeah, but um, yeah, well, from the cat's point of view. That that cat knows what you're doing, and the reason it know it has a frame of reference for what you're doing is your cat, her cat watched her watched her probably rub one out at some point. It just knows. You know, it's, cats know when you're doing weird sex stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, like animals know. Like yeah. a dog, a dog will know. Yeah, right? we we un, we understand each other on that. Yeah, you know? and uh, that's a this guy's cat has definitely um, at certain like like Christopher Walken is there. It's, I guess it's just like let's just not talk about it yeah you know it's like when <laughs> you know when you're a kid and you walk around with your dick out like, yeah. because you're a kid and you don't know any better yeah and then like you know you probably walked around a couple of times right because when you're a little kid you're there's that transition period before where like you're a baby and an actual little boy yeah and when you're a little baby nobody bats an eyelid if you walk mm. around naked like you know yeah and there must have been a period right I guarantee you you probably don't remember it, but everybody probably had this happen, right? Where you're like five or six and you're walking around and you don't really pay much attention to people and you got your dick out because yeah. you're still just coming out with being like, baby. What are you going to do? And I bet, right? I bet there's probably a moment where your dick was hard and you're walking around. Oh, no doubt. And you didn't know. You yeah. were just like, this is fine. Yeah, this is you, this you is know? what I do now. <laughs> well, this yeah. is what I intend to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. Stop me, society. You just walk, and then like they're mad. I mean, they're going, "Oh God, his dick's getting hard now." Oh fuck. Uh, Sean. Yeah. Can we just can from, we <laughs> from now on, right? We walk around with our inside penis. Yeah. Our indoor <laughs> penis, right? <laughs> you, you, yeah, just just you know. We we bought you we bought you underpants for a reason. Yeah. We bought you just under strap up just to be safe. <laughs> Alright. And uh keep keep it in the keep it indoors. Keep it, it indoors. You know, keep it indoors. Someday you'll meet someone who'll want you to do that. Yeah. But we don't want you to do that. And then they just never talk about it. Yeah. They never talk about seeing your weird little hard pecker ever again. Oh, the next time I'm home, me and my old one, me and Mam are going to have an, a weird conversation about that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I have no recollection of doing this, but I'm certain I, I did. There's no two ways. I'm there, certain there's I There's no two ways. I guarantee you, mm. like, um, fucking, it happened to every dude. And, like, you just don't talk about it. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like, people have those weird things. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, weird fallings out when I was a kid. Mm. Like, the people that have over really heinous issues or whatever. Yeah. And then, like, uh, the family or whoever will just continue to talk about it after a few weeks like mm. someone might murder someone's dog or something yeah and then like they'd be like fuck I hate you blah 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 and then like two weeks later because there's you know nowhere to go and nothing to do you end yeah. up just talking to one another again yeah pretty much and that, this is kind of what it is like you know I think this <laughs> is what happened I think probably fucking at this point right, we're escalating to the point where I think Jason Connery probably had a cafe at one point it's quite possible and he's there going like look at uh Maybe there's a deleted scene where Christopher Walken sings up to him and goes, mm. "Hey, uh, remember, remember when we were younger? <laughs> yeah. And you used to do that weird thing. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, you're you're making a very different movie in your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, you're making Dario Argento's Puss in Boots right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 
He's like, I like the leather on yeah. my fur. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Jess Franco's Puss in Boots. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Pearson's <laughs> everywhere. All right. Uh, here's where we get to Puss's master plan for them to never work again. Yeah. Right? Well, what he does, they're they're shacked up in this hovel somewhere. <laughs> right? A classic and, hovel. Yeah, a classic hovel. You know, it's just abandoned and they just crash in there for a couple of days. And uh, Puss goes out and he catches a bunch of pheasants and, you know, carries them off in a cage and says, oh, and Karen's like, oh, we can eat tonight. Fantastic. He's like, they're not for you. They're for the king. Yeah, yeah. Like, the king? Okay. And then he just lets them go. I'm just like, what the hell is wrong with you? That's food. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, he, he wanders off to the palace, which looks like it's made entirely out of cardboard. Yeah, yeah. And... <laughs> You know, he comes. He comes up to the gate and it's like. I'm surprised they didn't try to film in the Temple of Solomon. <laughs> yeah, pretty. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would have been amazing. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so, you know, I have I have presents for the king, and it's like uh, presents from who? From my master, the Marquis of. Uh, and there's a cart going by with Carabas wines, like from the Marquis of Carabas. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, fair enough. And he just arrives in. With, with this and he won and they let him in and he wanders in and say you know a present for the king from uh, from the Marquis of Carabas and the king is like who? and it starts off this big musical number yeah who is the Marquis of Carabas oh. we'd never heard his name yeah. it's like is that not a fucking flashing red light to someone in the court yeah that yeah. you've never heard the name before that this is someone fucking trying well, it I'm, on I'm just gonna say right yeah all the royal people in this mm. take fuckers yeah but um pick inbred yeah and uh, anyway we you know this is a universe where a cat is the smartest sentient being yeah. You know, let's be perfectly honest here. Well, we meet our princess. I can't remember her name. We'll just call um, her princess. Uh, princess Vera. Okay. Good looking woman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I was kind of worn, wondering whether she would be a... I was wondering if she was uh, Israeli herself. Mm. Just so I could somehow get her editor to use Frank's app as Jewish princess <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in, the th- in the song. We're going to do it anyways. But... Uh, you know, it was, uh, yeah, I, yeah, it was, she was, I liked her, she was cute, you know? I, she I, was a bit too skinny for my like. Yeah, I, I looked her up on IMDb, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the woman who plays her, um, Carmela Marner. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was the daughter of the director of this film. Ah, there you go. Eugene Marner. Yeah. And um, she had, she, according to her IMDb, she has had, she's played two characters over the course of her film career. Who had names, yeah. and uh, the other was in the Ken film tale of Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, yeah, was she uh, Red Riding Hood? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. But you know, everything else, she was she was in like the ori- the original Tom Cruise Mission Impossible for like a scene. She was in Eyes Wide Shut for like a scene. Oh, you know, no, no, not, not oh. one of those. Shame, I know. <laughs> but, uh, no, she was just a restaurant. She was just like a waitress in a restaurant or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, that. So without 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 being me. Sorry, I always show is like an Assassin's Creed porn parody. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything we can take from this, yeah, it's yeah. it's that. But uh, so you know, without without being mean, that should kind of tell you what you know a lot about the quality of this woman's work and I, I don't mean to, to be mean about it yeah. but um, she's got a few musical numbers she doesn't have a particularly strong voice you know. but look at she's, uh, she's not not without charm oh she's not without charm she, she's uh, I, I, got you know yeah, she she look she looks great. She 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 looks like you would expect a, a princess to look. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? not like the weird. Well, you would, and not historically, of course. Yeah. Because I mean, I've said this before, the royals in the worlds back in medieval times mm. would live in what a regular person would deem like unimaginable filth. Yeah, you know, like that's the thing. Like, we, we have these like even all be slightly in red. Yo, know, yeah. Even in Game of Thrones and stuff like that, it's like they the, the actors look like they've had a bit of soap near them in the last year. Yeah, wouldn't happen. No, you know, they've been just boils and warts and fucking you know consumption. Yeah, <laughs> whatever that is. Typhoid. 
<laughs> these old timey <laughs> fucking diseases people had like, yeah. you know but uh, anyway uh, there's she yeah. basically Christopher Walken uh, is trying to set up uh, Jason Connery as this marquee yeah and basically you can tell where this is going yeah he just he just keeps giving gifts to the king yeah and it's and like he's the king yeah he owns the kingdom yeah in, in my notes here I have um <sighs> The what Puss is what Puss is suggesting here is the equivalent of trying to win Bill Gates' favor by sending him a KFC family book. Every <laughs> it's he's the richest man in the kingdom. He's the most powerful man in the kingdom. You're sending him pheasants. You're sending him fucking rabbits. Here's it's a like, voucher for Ali. You know, he owns fucking hunting grounds. He is the king. Yeah, um, I mean, come on here. The uh, but apparently it fucking works. Oh yeah, he was like, Jesus Christ, they never had chicken like this. For, yeah, you know, like, you know, shitty fucking chickens yeah. that were caught in the fucking forest. Yeah, who is the Marquis of Carabas? But uh, yeah, I'll say this, sorry. Right? At this point, I wasn't having a lot of fun. Mm. All right, and I wrote the note. Christopher Walken, this is his favorite film he was ever in. Mm. Christopher Walken has shit taste in his own films. <laughs> Right. I don't need to fucking qualify that. Yeah. Right. But yeah, the the anyway, um, he Christopher Walken somehow uh, ma- machines, uh, fucking Jason Connery's character into the role of the Marquis of Carabas. Yeah. The uh, like through nudity and weird. Yeah. They, f- this was kind of an interesting thing. It was like he he took he took Corin to see the king, but beforehand was like. You might need to have a wash first. Yeah. And he sends him swimming in the river for a little bit. Yeah. And um wouldn't you know it? You know, we have no we were never fucking conditioned to understand that Puss knew this was gonna happen, but the king comes along. Yeah. It's like, yeah. help, help, my master, he has been robbed. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Despite the yeah. fact that he was walking along with the most dangerous psychotic looking man. <laughs> yeah. If world. someone's walking around with Christopher Walken, yeah. I'm not gonna mug him. You know, I'm not gonna. You know, the Dude. walking party will be unmolested yeah, in yeah. any fucking town they go to. He just has to get <laughs> wide eyed and goes, "Do you really want to do this?" Yeah, you could, you could, you could put down the Baltimore riots by yeah. doing that. To I be will honest. dance and sing on your grave. <laughs> I don't like your tone. If you do that again, I'm gonna stab you in the face with a shank. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and when you meet the Virgin Mary, you tell her that you met the Antichrist. <laughs> But uh, tell him Frank Black says hello. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, anyways, <laughs> well, uh, I think this is kind of clever. Uh, you know, when the when the king comes along, it's like help, help, my master, he has been robbed, and they send in a bunch of the king's guys to get this guy out. And you know, Karn has not been clued up to this, so he's fighting these people off. Yeah, and Walken just goes, you know, he, he you know, he. He's still stunned. He's been. He's still fighting those men in his head. Yeah. So, well, so he's he's mental, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> no. just a madman. Yeah. But anyway, he machines him yeah. in, right? And uh, we discover mm. that the princess uh, is being courted. Yeah. By um, just what? gentlemen and by three suitors. Well, I'll, I'll get into what she's into. Mm. But uh, <laughs> basically, uh, she's getting the hots for. Uh, for Jason Connery's character, yeah, which uh, which we learn over a over a scene, a, a point of view scene from her, yeah. which goes on uncomfortably long, even for him. Yeah, oh yeah. Where she's just staring at him. Yeah, and he and you can see him just sort of eyes darting back and forth, like is she still staring at me? Like what the what the fuck's going on here? Yeah, um, it's um, it's a bit weird. I mean, but uh, she she has like this weird Catholic shame nanny who's giving her shit yeah oh, Jesus Christ you're such a whore yeah. stop liking men Start, yeah how, you know, how dare you like men and do things yeah how dare you look out the window look at your big whore's <laughs> eyes on you as you look out the window yeah. shut your eyes yeah. Jesus if you don't if you don't keep your eyes shut you'll, you'll never keep your <laughs> knees shut <laughs> you know fucking yeah I, I, like this woman was Horrifying. Although, in fairness, she kind of had a point because that scene, that scene I was telling you about the the POV Vera scene. If that was in smell-o-vision, oh god, no! But I'm just saying, 
brother, that's why I like women. <laughs> yeah. I like women who are forward with you. Oh, like yeah. these things, you know. And she most definitely is. Oh yeah, like you would like can you imagine how handy it would be yeah. if there's like a good looking woman like she was, mm. right? And she got the hot seat and she comes up and goes, Hey, I like you. You wanna, yeah, wanna you hang are, out? Yeah. Instead of you having to be like, Oh, no, God, what's causing all this? Is she staring at me because I'm covered in fucking shit or something? <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't have to go through that whole self hate and self doubt and fucking rack of consciousness. You know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, letting you let you a little bit too much there to my own <laughs> foibles, but uh, we find out there, uh, she's being courted by several princes. Yeah, but I, I'll say this: yeah. the the princes in the area seem to be going for a kind of uniformed Freddie Mercury Brian May mashup look. Yeah, I I was, uh, she she's been courted by three different princes: uh, yeah. the Prince of Patience, who yeah. looks like a pimp. In both senses of the word. Yeah, yeah. In that he's very well dressed and he would sell a woman's arse. Oh, yeah. Uh, he looks like he'd be a hooker half the day yeah. with a mess of coat hangers. Yeah, the, there's the Prince of Size, who in reality would be the favourite. Yeah. But, um, you know, because how does a man get that handle? Seriously. Yeah. C- come yeah, on now. Yeah. And uh, then there's the Prince of Rapture, who, uh, when, when he's introduced, he throws, he throws his staff up in the air and he catches it in such a way that it, you know, he should have finished with like an air guitar riff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they'd have gotten away with it. He would have gotten away with it. It's like, me- what, what do you got to lose at this point? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> the Prince of Rapture is a fucking great name. Yeah. I gotta give him that. Like, uh, that's a good name for an 80s metal band, to be honest with you. If Or an anime character. Yeah. But you know. oh, before this scene, they, they did uh, Karen, Vera, Puss, and Clara all sing a medley. About being genteel, yeah. where it's all about you know, you know, conceal, don't reveal, you know, yeah. hide the way you feel, and it's basically just a guide to being a modern day hipster. It, it, I essentially, thought, I thought it was more like Catholic shame the song. It it kind of was, you yeah. Know. If if you want, you know, if there are any non Catholics listening to this, you know, uh, just listen to that song, and it'll give you a general idea of what Catholicism is. Yeah, yeah. you know that and murder. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, so um, mm. they they having a, a bit of a dance. Yeah. Right now he's there going like they're having these court dances. You've seen them before. You've seen yeah. them around. Yeah. But um, <laughs> there and he goes, ah, oh, uh, Jason Connery goes, I, I don't know these dances. I only know country dances. Yeah. And at this point, I was thinking, please, yeah, please, all right, if pay the money, all right. Yeah. And I was waiting for. Don't go messing with a country yeah, boy. Yeah, that would have been like, amazing. If Hillbilly James music kind of hit, <laughs> yeah. and he just started clapping his hands yeah. and stomping his feet, mm. I would have been like, "This is amazing." Yeah. You know, but instead they put like, oh, "I'm going to make a request of our editor. Just yeah. play Don't Go Messing with the Country <laughs> Boy for us right now." Uh, so the listeners at home who were bereft of knowledge yeah. of how amazing oh, Hillbilly oh, Jim. Well, uh, um, yeah, Chris, Christopher Walken just he goes over to the band leader and is like you know put on a country song yeah and I was like uh, we, you know some country songs don't you of course I do and he puts on something a bit more up tempo and all that and you know yeah. Karen and Vera start you know doing a bit of you know uh, a bit of like swirling around the floor all that sort of thing I, I don't understand dancing so this yeah. and uh, Walken wanders off into into the kitchen and he just starts dancing there. And you don't go messing with a country yeah. boy. Yeah, and why? Because he's Christopher Walken, and fuck you if you try to stop him. Oh, yeah. There Look, was a UN resolution back in 1986, meaning that he can dance wherever he wants, this, whenever he at wants. At this point, I made the note, right? Yeah. Christopher Walken is having a good time, and they seemingly just made a film around that. Yeah, essentially. And you know, like, he went, put on Hillbilly Jim's music. <laughs> I'm going to dance to this in the kitchen set. Have cameras there? I don't. I don't, I don't care. That is a new song we will put in the movie. <laughs> don't go messing with a country boy. A country boy, a country, country boy. boy. A country boy. <laughs> when I was a kid, my mother killed a bear. <laughs> a big old bear. She fed us the bear. We put the bear into our bodies. Don't. Don't go messing with a country boy. You mess with a country boy, you end up in a bad place. 
You get to heaven, you see a Virgin Mary, you say you ran into a fucking country boy. <laughs> Don't you go messing with a country boy. <laughs> Do things differently in the country. <laughs> 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 but, uh, well, you've just greatly improved Hillbilly Jim for me. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> my cousin Hulk Hogan had a wedding. <laughs> Uncle Elmer. Live on television. <laughs> that... That piece of shit... Rowdy Roddy Piper... Came out... In his skirt. Like a woman. I said... You messing... What a country Ooh, boy. boy. You don't want to mess with a country boy. <laughs> but um, anyway. So swiftly moving on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we get um, we, the, the court dancing that they were doing before. Yeah. Uh, it looks boring as fuck. It's yeah. just people like, yeah. you know why. But still better than uh, most of the terracotta warrior crowds that we get in the Russian Dove. Yeah, gigs. pretty much. But you know, um, we're... we're, we're um, you know, this dance is enough for Vera and Karen to decide that they love each other greatly. Oh, yeah, they probably um, both got the smell of want off each other. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, they decide to meet up at at the bridge where they originally met. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that's the thing, like, um, yeah. like all couples. Yeah. You know, especially when you're young. Mm. You just meet at the bridge. Yeah. That's where people did fingering back in the yeah, day. Yeah, well, I'm assuming that the two of them are, like, you know, 18, 19, oh, something yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, it's legal. Like, yeah, legal. but Not you know. like Livia de Havo. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> oh, I looked it up. She's legal. It's grand. Oh, we, yeah, we don't yeah. have to. We don't have to go off on that rant again. Yeah, but, <laughs> but uh, it, it's the weirdest thing, though. It's like yeah, it's it's very true to life. Yeah. Where it's just like that was the thing back then. I'm sure yeah. you were like, meet me at the bridge. Yeah. Okay. And it, but it, but instead of fingering like like what happened in in reality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what they did sing was a song about how true love at first sight has found them. And it was like, love at first, uh, the line that stuck out in my mind was, love at first sight might just last us for a lifetime. Yeah. And the cynical bastard that I am, I immediately thought, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Fair like, play, yeah. Unless, look, it's, here's the timeline for their relationship. Yeah. Right? They're both having a sing song about mm. how much they love one another. Yeah. Two years in, right? Mm. He's singing like grunge songs about how miserable he is. Yeah. All right. And then she just sings a song about how maybe we'll just try Peg and see if that brings something back to the relationship. Yeah, and you know, about three years down the line, she set up like a feminist punk band. Yeah, yeah. And, They're you know, divorced. Yeah. And uh, she... You know, called the Clunges or something. Yeah, and... yeah. Or just like, you know, mm. the Tumblers. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, mm. she... Yeah, they, they, it's just not a good time. Yeah. So she, so she pretty much proposes to yeah. this dude. Oh, look, she's uh, fr- she's all up on yeah. the front street, and like, I, you know? I, I have to respect that. Yeah, she and wants to go messing with a country boy. Exactly, but of course he has to go and just ask permission of the father. Look, we've all done. Yeah, and the story, and the story has gotten back to the what what where Puss went wrong. Puss got drunk and told the entire kitchen staff that. The Marquis of Carabas owns all of the stuff that the ogre owns. Yeah. And what happened <clears throat> is the story got back to the king. And when Karen went to ask, she, you know, the king went, uh, so I hear you've got loads of stuff and you've got a massive castle. Yeah. We're going to have to go check that, sh- that out. You I- know, because apparently there's a few people out there who have never heard of the Marquis of Carabas just as a position. Yeah. And we might need to prove that you are who the fuck you say you are. Before I let you marry my daughter. Before I let you marry my only daughter because you sound shady as fuck. I'll say this. When I was watching this, uh, your one goes, uh, Princess... Uh, What's her name? Uh, Unintentional Lord Rome Jim reference there. Princess, (laughs) what's her name? But um, I was... uh, uh, Yeah, like there were... She's there going like... Oh, it'll be grand. We'll get married. And then I'll say to my father, I married a Miller's son. Mm. We don't have to worry about this. And then we'll be there going, ah, a big old joke on you. And all I could think was, he'll fucking Tywin Lannister your ass. Yeah. All right? No. Like, the only song you'll be hearing is the Reigns of Castamere <laughs> yeah. as he feeds fucking uh, Jason Connery into his dad's old mill. <laughs> Pretty you know? much. You know? You like, know, the bloody mill of Carabas. Yeah. That was, you know... 
it's not going to end well, love. No, you, know? you don't fuck with royalty back in those days. It's, it, it was uh, they're the they were the gangsters of their time. Oh yeah, it was not going to end well. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah, I think you know what I'll do. I'll just walk up to Suge Knight, smack him in the back of the head, and run. Yeah, nothing yeah. bad can come out of that. You know, I think I'll just you know I think I'll just go to Pablo Escobar and just keep poking him till he slaps me. Nothing bad can come of that. Sorry, reigns of Katzimir. Cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. I. Oh fuck. <laughs> God damn. It's early. It's it's early morning. My pun, my pun sen, my pun sensor isn't and great right now. So he spoke, <laughs> and so he spoke. That Lord of Katsimir, yes. <laughs> and now the rains weep o'er his hall, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but uh, we. Uh, yeah, I, I wrote that at this point yeah. as well. I'd love to see a remake with Aiden Gill in this post. I don't know why, like, you know. <laughs> uh, Mr. King, I think <laughs> you might need to let me man the Marquis of Carabasin. <laughs> Fuck. That's what he really sounds like, you know. Yeah, oh, but look, yeah. when you see him, in Game of Thrones at the moment, Aiden Gill is giving up less and less. Yeah. At this point, he's just going to turn up wearing a tracksuit. Yeah, <laughs> at know? some point. And, uh, anyway, uh, we... The, what am I saying? Where the fuck am we? Um, yeah, I wrote here that you obviously probably have more notes on this. They yeah. go to find his castle. Yeah, but but they send Puss on along ahead. Yeah, and what he does, he goes to all of the serfs, all of the fucking you know slave scrub guys. <laughs> it's like you know there has been a proclamation. Yeah, the ogre has now been named the Marquis of Carabas by the king. If you are to refer to the ogre as anything other than the Marquis of Carabas, he will be very, very vengeful. Yeah, and um, and uh, there, there was... Um, so he just does this to like three or four different groups. And they all... So and, they'll corroborate. Yeah, so they'll corroborate it. But apparently these are the only three or four groups that the king stops to check with. Yeah, but I mean, did you see anyone else? True, true. Yeah, all well, right, fair point. Uh, but... Uh, Here's now, the thing, though. As I was watching this, the king is stopping the carriage every yeah. minute to ask who owns the land, who yeah. owns this and the other. And I was like, well, look at this big fucking decadent fuck. Yeah. I don't care. Two years after the end of this movie, mm. right, he, uh, your man needn't worry about him being the king because there's no doubt there would have been a fucking uprising by the working class. One can only hope. And this guy would have been fed to a guillotine. Yeah. You know, uh, you know the the republicanism is coming out in me as well yeah, when I'm yeah. watching this. It's like, I was like, you fucking... fuck, fuck you and your shoebox fucking carriage. Yeah, all right, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't recognize your office. All right? <laughs> yeah, and one day, brother, a real rain's gonna come. Yeah, and it's gonna I... ro- wash the scum off the fucking throne. <laughs> I actually at this point as well, I wrote a uh, woman with a guillotine fetish. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if you remember. Well, you wouldn't have seen this, but I'm sure the person editing this years ago there was a fucking TV show where there's this woman and she was in Sweden mm. and she was sexually attracted to guillotines. What? And she was like, I want to marry this guillotine. And <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Just like ah, uh, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> She just loved guillotines. That's fucking mental. I remember watching this the night before I went to see Iron Maiden. Yeah. And that's 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 an aside. That's what send, that's what an aside is right there. Send send me a link to that. I, I kind of want to see it, that. Yeah, she loved guillotines. Um, but um, you know, but after after so after Puss yeah. uh, sends out some false information to the serfs. Yeah, it's like, um, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like th- this whole thing. It's like. Von Stauffenberg's attempt to assassinate Hitler. Yeah. You know, it's like just false information, mm. and, you know. And, but, you know, it's about to take a bit of a divergence from uh, Von Stauffenberg's attempt to assassinate Hitler. Yeah. In a very fucking real and visceral way in a second here. Because, uh, you know, Puss arrives at the ogre's castle. And the ogre has staff, apparently, which I, which we had never been led yeah, to believe he had. I thought he was just living on his own. Yeah, so did I. But um, he he gets there and is like, you know, M- Mr. Ogre, you have been made the, the Marquis, Marquis of Carabas. And it's like, you know, a Marquis, me. And it's, once again, the man cannot speak English as a first language. Yeah. It, you know, my guess is... They just told him what it was phonetically and he just shouted it. Yeah. That's my my guess. And I was waiting for him to sing, but he never did. He never did. 
But it was like, you know, just as Puss was leaving, he was like, I've heard some amazing things about you. That you can change into any animal you want. And, you know, he don't... So, you know, into the shitty morphing effects, he changes into a bear. Yeah. He's like, well, you're a big and powerful man. I only assume it would be easy for you to turn into something big and powerful, like a bear. However, can you turn into so- something small? Like a like, mouse. Like a mouse. And immediately, I'm, twi- I'm twigging it. What he's up to. Oh, of course. And, um, it was like, okay... I see what you're doing here. You're going. You want him to turn into a mouse so you can turn into a cat and eat him. Yeah, it's murder like, him. Murder him. Eat the man like flat <laughs> up cannibalism. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, this. I went off in a weird place in my head. Like, it once once he's eaten, once he's dead, would would he stop? Would he not turn back into the ogre? At some point, he turned into Christopher Walken's shit. I'm yeah, but but like if he's in Christopher Walken's stomach, no, no, and he turns back into the ogre, you know. Don't he, worry about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Clearly not. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I'm just saying that that would be some really fucked up American McGee style stuff. Right oh, look, there. if if but, Christopher Walken turned back into a man, or right? yeah, and then like he just like oh my god, and he started vomiting up a life size life size chunks of the ogre. <laughs> yeah, it's just like feet and like his brain <laughs> and shit. Like that would have been amazing. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it would have been completely at odds with the rest of the movie. Yeah, but, you know you but, can't have everything. Anyway, uh, they, they, he eats him, and then like he puts on a nice little spread. Yeah, the king, and like they. We don't yeah, see the staff just immediately go. Well, we'll take this man's orders. He yeah, yeah. ate our boss. In fairness, no, right? Yeah. If Christopher Walken came into this house, yeah, and just started telling us that there was a party about to happen, yeah, we'd probably go along with him. Yeah, you got a point there. You know what I yeah. mean? Would, Fair point. He's there going, brother. Yeah. There's going to be a party happening, <laughs> and uh, I'll be like, yeah, sure, man. Let's do whatever. Like, Sounds you know? yeah, okay. Uh, I I'll, I'll spend all of the money I have on this thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. let's do like this. Grace Jones might come over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, Fuck yeah. But uh, pull up to the bumper, baby. But, uh, <laughs> and you know he said, you know he puts on a bi- a feast big enough for the entire king's court. Yeah. In the what appears to be in movie time about like half an hour, which is some sort of minor fucking miracle. Hey man, um, yeah, he's a cat man. He's a cat man. <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, I'm thinking way too much about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, he's know. a cat man who just ate a large Israeli gentleman. Yeah, <laughs> you know, who turned so, into a mouse. Who turned into a mouse, uh, and you know he'll be, you know, he'll be having massive fucking bald headed shits for like about three months after. Oh, yeah, this. It's just there's eyeballs yeah. and everything coming out of his asshole. And asphalt. when they arrive in, and you know Vera and the Mark and Karen and the King all arrive. And somehow they, and they're looking through it. And it's like, oh my god, he does have a castle. Yeah. He's like, fair enough. And some guy comes in, and goes, the castle has a thousand rooms. Yeah. He's like, Jesus, you were fucking quick counting those, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. You know, and then another guy comes in, and he has a thousand Arabian stallions from a thousand different sultans. It's like, because they all came with certs. Yeah. Why? Why didn't you? Have you just been fucking wandering around this place without permission, just checking shit out? Is For that the last few hours. Yeah, and then the next guy comes in with the fucking with the fucking chest of jewels the, that your man was talking about earlier. It's like the what? Ch- yeah, you you went into the man's fucking treasury without his permission. The, ch- the that- chest full of Argos jewelry. <laughs> yeah, it's the most cheap looking shit I've oh, ever seen. Oh hell yeah! Like, you well, know. you know for the. There is a lot about this movie that looks cheap as fuck. Yeah. To be perfectly honest. But, um... And it ends with the big... With the big, you know, medley piece from everyone. Yeah. Singing how brilliant it was that Puss came into Karen's life. Yeah. Even though the king shouldn't fucking know that that's what happened. But the king is singing this song anyways because it's the last song of the fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. And it just... And it, it cuts to Puss walking away... And he just slips into cat form and he stares at the screen, freeze frame, thin. Well, I'll say this, all right? Here's a, here was a, a thing that would only be experienced in my bedroom when I watched this last night. Yeah. Just the image of the cat, freeze frame, staring outwards. Yeah. 
uh, at that time our cat Dio mm. um, got freaked out by that cat staring <laughs> at her and she just kind of stood up and stared the, the, the on screen cat out and then at the very end of the credits yeah. uh, the cat moves again yeah. and that scared the shit out of Dio <laughs> and she ran away <laughs> but uh, yeah um, I don't know Netflix predicted two and a half stars for me on this one yeah. and I'll be honest with you that's kind of where um, I ended up with it. It mm. wasn't a great movie. Like, uh, it, there's an old saying about films mm. that uh, the more fun they had making it, the less fun you have watching it. Yeah, and um, that's true of comedies a lot. I think. Like, yeah. You know, but um, this to me, I think Christopher Walken probably did have an absolute fucking ball making this movie. Mm. But I was left bored at times by it. I'll be honest with you. Absolutely. Uh, it's not like it didn't have the zippy pace of a movie like Breaking which had probably just as much story yeah. but it was just like cool yeah you know and you know a bit more energy and a bit more you know yeah yeah. it was for... just look it was fun there was I, I had fun thinking about Hillbilly Jim <laughs> yeah and, um... I no I had I had fun watching Walken yeah, yeah you know I mean because Walken in this he's clearly he like you said he's clearly having the time of his life doing this and he's Christopher Walken. You can't not watch him when he's on screen. Yeah. And here, here's a question for you. You said about two and a half stars with Walken. With, yeah. What would it be without Walken? I mean, I wouldn't have watched it. Yeah, same here. Yeah, you know, uh, if uh, if Walken hadn't been, it's an, it's a poorly directed film. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, and visually, it's. It there's not a whole lot going on. Mm. Like it's almost like a porno at times. Yeah. It's just like people in costume. It, and just like yeah, it static looks, cameras yeah like, it know? looks incredibly cheap it yeah. is, um, there's there's not uh, in terms of recommendations the only instance I can recommend this to our listeners yeah would be if you're babysitting someone's toddler or something uh, like but that but I think there's know. better than that oh like, there there is better than that but I'm yeah, just, I, mean, I, I was just going through my head in what instance Unless you're like a Walken completist, yeah. or you you're babysitting get, someone, there's no reason you should watch this. Get the if you're gonna babysit someone, I don't know, like get some yeah. Disney movie or something or, like you know, you know, Big Trouble in Little China. That's perfect. Yeah, but um, well, no, like if you're gonna get a musical for a kid, get in The Little Mermaid or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, well, Disney have done like a thousand times. Yeah, Disney than this. do this shit well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. What's the one they like at the moment? Um, uh, Frozen that's the one yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, that's the thing about his, his me as well a lot of people kind of go, go oh my god I hate you because mm. I don't like Disney movies for the most part oh right like uh, I appreciate them mm. but I just don't enjoy them I'm more I'm more of a Pixar guy myself you know, I just, look it's mm. just not my bag that's fair right? like uh, when I was a kid I really liked Beauty and the Beast mm. I thought the Beast looked cool yeah but like to me like, even though he was a total emo Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, like to me as a kid, like uh, Disney stuff I was into was gargoyles. Oh fuck yeah! You know, and looking around, I love some Disney movies like Return to Oz is a Disney movie. Mm. Uh, fucking, I love Return to Oz. Return to Oz is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, uh, it's fucking crazy. But um, you know, but I, I, I love it. It's so good. The Wheelers. <laughs> are one of the scariest fucking things ever in a kid's yeah. movie oh, and fuck, the, yeah. the queen who could change her heads mm. fucking, and the stone king yeah. with his fucking cross-dressing shoes yeah. amazing now, the the computer wore tennis shoes for me is like my favourite oh, yeah, Disney those, all those Kurt Russell ones yeah, yeah the Kurt Russell one not the fucking Kurt Cameron one I yeah. love Kurt Russell yeah Kurt Russell is like <laughs> my favourite actor probably but uh but uh you know I but anyways back to what we were saying I Honestly, I can't. I can't recommend this. Yeah, really... it's not. It, look, if you if you're a walking completionist, yeah. or someone is looking for a curio, yeah, then yeah, sure, go ahead. Right. You know, it's it's an hour. It's an hour and a half out of your life on Netflix. Yeah, that's. But it's not. It won't hold you. Yeah. It's, it's a boring movies, and I wouldn't have watched the whole thing if I didn't need to do this review. I'll be honest. With like you. about, I'll I'll say it about forty minutes in, I did pause it to check my Facebook. You know, so yeah, this is. Yeah. The level of involved I was. I wasn't. I wasn't as fucked off though as I was with Bolero. Oh yeah. So Bolero is still the bottom of the bunch for movies. We've oh, absolutely. Here. I mean, they, this is this is you know bottom of the middle. Yeah, it's a look. It's 
It's what it is. What it is. Yeah. Twenty by twenty ring. Yeah. But uh, and it, it's it's just not a very good film. Yeah. Let's let's be perfectly honest here. Anyway, look, we don't need to worry about this anymore. Mm. Um, it's in the past. Yeah. Uh, not only the fictional past, but the literal past. <laughs> and uh, yeah, our next. Uh, we should probably talk about our next movie. And mm. um, yeah, uh, this it's it's a the nineteen eighties, of course. Of course. Um. Vampire, zombie, alien, sex picture. Yeah. That is life force. Yeah. And if if that if that description of a movie isn't enough to make you want to watch a movie, yeah. you and I cannot be friends. Yeah, it's you just, just need to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, run, run that one by me again. Vampire, uh, zombie, alien, sex picture. Fuck Yes. Directed by the legend that is Toby Hooper. Yes. You know, what is it? Life Force. Life Force. So here's the trailer. From the director of Poltergeist and the writer of Alien comes a terrifying new film. I'm getting a very small radar cross section. 150 miles long. EGR is confirmed. Tell them we have an artificial object out here. In the tale of Haley's Comet, <gasps> there's something wrong. Something ancient. Something evil. Jesus. Houston, we have a problem. Something's happening to me. Something hungry. That's brought to Earth. She's destroyed worlds. That girl was no girl. She was totally alien to this planet and our life form. And totally dangerous. <laughs> Just found a body in Hyde Park. Life Force. Close your eyes. I visited you how? In my mind. Let it go! It's already spreading. You didn't stop it, it's too late. Come, be with me. Life Force. The terror has just begun. Okay, uh, well, I guess it's time for us to wrap up. Uh, I hope everybody will join us for Life Force. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this show, I would actually like to welcome any new listeners we might have mm. from the uh, the Canon Films Appreciation Board on Facebook, who are very uh, open to us sharing our uh, stuff with them. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Uh, the I'd also like to uh, give a special shout out to one of our listeners, Sean McLaughlin. Uh, also known as Soggy Hydrox on Twitter who uh, provided me with a bit of extra trivia about Enter the Ninja and how uh, apparently we were talking about the influence of uh, what was the uh, uh, S- Sonny uh, Chiba no no we are talking about the influence of the movie on Revenge of Shinobi yeah and he pointed out that apparently uh, more than an influence fucking uh, Sho Kusagi yeah. um, sued and uh, won in a case against Sega for stealing his image really for those games yeah. that's tremendous and uh, so like, <laughs> yeah it, it was kind of cool to hear that and yeah. I, I, I think you're the same I love hearing from the people who listen to this show absolutely and, more, uh, the more the merrier and I'm Johnny Capcom on Twitter and you're uh, Robot Ho Sean on Twitter absolutely and uh, if you want to get in touch with us uh, that we've got a Canon, Canon Facebook page as well mm. that I haven't updated since I fucking put it up but you know again it's got a picture yeah. of uh you and Bo Derek on a horse yeah together and she looks far more interested in the prospect than I do to be honest with yeah, you yeah yeah but, uh, but um, <laughs> we're uh, facebook.com forward slash the canon canon obviously you're probably listening to this through giant media ball.com mm. that's our feed uh, we're also featured on purefiller.com when I remember to tell Scott Luke about the show out <laughs> uh, apologies to that uh and uh, yeah we're 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 on the internet google yeah, us just, you know you'll find us and, we're 
in the dreams of small children you will find us <laughs> but um, yeah so we we'll hope you'll join us again for life force mm. and uh, we we'll hope you'll uh, you'll put it you'll put out a virtual handshake and let us give you the good brother handshake back absolutely and uh, ladies as well you gotta understand we, we got female listeners mm. good brother not a gender exclusive term yeah all of you people are good brothers absolutely as far as we're concerned, like you know you become a good brother as soon as you start liking this show you don't That's... need you don't need a penis to be a good brother absolutely you know how you know you're a good brother yeah you're a good brother absolutely anyway uh we'll uh we'll leave it there mm. and uh, we'll hope you'll join us again and uh yeah fucking see you later see you later with you in your castle forever just like in a fairy tale i just couldn't live with myself so don't pretend this is a happy ending selena selena kyle you're fired bruce what are yeah. you doing dressed as batman because he is batman you moron was